Hello everyone. Today our topic is silage production. This will be one of the topics, uh, the broad topic, microbes in human welfare. So we will discuss silage production today. What is silage and why we need silage? For dairy animals, green fodder is an economical source of nutrients. But green fodder is available only seasonally. So in a season when we have enough of green fodder produced, we need conservation on the green fodder so that the green fodder can be fed to the dairy animals around the year. Now green fodder can be conserved as silage after fermentation. So basically silage is a fermentation product from green fodder. Conserved green fodder with moisture content of 65 to 70% is our silage. Fodder crops rich in carbohydrate are incubated for 45 to 50 days under anaerobic condition. And the sugar present in fodder gets converted to lactic acid during that anaerobic condition, anaerobic fermentation. This lactic acid acts as preservative and the fodder can be preserved after a good fermentation. If for any reason anaerobic condition is not maintained well during the silage production steps, then butyric acid is produced and the quality of the silage is affected negatively. And the properly produced silage can be stored for two years. So it is the lactic acid and the low pH which is produced in the silage protects the or conserves the silage for two years. Now what are the fodder crops suitable for silage making? Fodder crops which are rich in carbohydrate like maize, sorghum, oat, pearl millet, hybrid napier and there are many other grasses as well. Quality of silage can be improved with additives such as molasses, urea, salt, formic acid etc. So that fermentation becomes faster, fermentation becomes proper. Procedure of silage making. So first and foremost get fodder crop at 30 to 35 percent dry matter content stage that means we have 65 to 70 percent water in the fodder that means we are getting green fodder directly from the field then cut the fodder crop into small pieces of 2 to 3 centimeter size fill the silo with chopped fodder at the rate of 500 to 600 kg of your green fodder, chopped green fodder per cubic meter area and press. Additives can be given during the filling. After filling and pressing, seal with tough polythene sheet that will maintain the anaerobic condition in the silo. Put some weight like mud or sandbag on the surface so that no air goes inside the silo. Then keep that condition for about 45 days. After 45 days, the silo can be opened and it is ready for feeding cattle or other dairy animals. So here we can see the green fodder being cut into small pieces with the help of a machine. Then the Cut fodder is used to fill the silo. Then the filled silo is covered well with polythene sheet. This condition is kept for 45 days. So an anaerobic condition is created here so that fermentation occurs well. And the silage produced in this process is of good quality. So this is the final silage produced. We still see that there is a green color in the silage so this is the produced silage huh? now what are the qualities 
of, of a good silage. The color uh, should be bright, light green or yellow or greenish brown in color. There should not be butyric acid and it, if it is there, it should be less than 0.2% and no ammonia. Silage should be soft but firm. Moisture content should be 65 to 70%. Lactic acid content 3 to 14%. And pH 4 to 4.2. Advantage of silage. Good quality fodder acts as a substitute of green fodder. And silage gives you year-round supply even in the lean season in the season when green fodder is not available naturally. Surplus green fodder can be prevented from wastage by silage production. Parasites present in the green fodder can be killed during silage production process. And silage improves livestock productivity. Now, what is the role of microbes? Now in one study, it has been shown that the green fodder before ensiling, before putting them in the silo, they contain various types of microorganisms, aerobic bacteria, lactic acid bacteria, enterobacteria, yeast, molds, clostridia, bacilli, acetic acid bacteria, propionic acid bacteria of different population size. Okay, per gram of crop. And you can see here, the population of aerobic bacteria is the highest. But that of lactic acid bacteria is relatively less. Okay, but it is this lactic acid bacteria which play a role in fermentation. Anaerobic fermentation of green fodder. So, fodder crop has both aerobic and anaerobic microbes on it. We need lactic acid bacteria for fermentation. But what we have seen here, these groups of microorganisms, this huge number of microorganisms, these are present on the crop. So, these are basically phylosphere microorganisms, which are naturally present on the crop. Or you can say phyloplane microorganisms which are there on the crop. Now lactic acid bacteria have a role to make good quality silage. Now what are those lactic acid bacteria? They are lactobacillus, pediococcus, lactococcus, enterococcus, streptococcus and leuconostoc. They all produce lactic acid from sugar which is present in the crop through anaerobic fermentation. Now, these lactic acid bacteria can be of two types. They may be homofermenters or heterofermenters. Homofermenters means a glucose molecule is converted by these homofermenters into two moles of lactic acid. Lactic acid. And heterofermenters, they convert one glucose molecule to one mole of lactic acid and carbon dioxide plus ethanol or acetic acid. Now, for a good quality silage, we need more of lactic acid. Therefore, homo fermenters will be better in the silage making. The low pH, because when we have more of lactic acid produced, then pH of the fodder drops and it drops to 4 to 4.2. So, low pH and lactic acid preserve the crop. Low pH also inhibits other bacteria. So as the anaerobic condition is maintained, the fermentation happens and the pH of the silage goes down and the low pH inhibits other bacteria like aerobic bacteria which are present on the fodder. Lactic acid and acetic acid inhibit aerobic microbes. Many aerobic microbes are inhibited. Anaerobic condition prevents the growth of yeast, mold and aerobic bacteria. Since the anaerobic condition is maintained in the silage, it prevents the growth of many other microorganisms. So, although initially the fodder crop may contain a large number of 
unnecessary or undesirable microorganisms but as the anaerobic condition is maintained the lactic acid bacteria they multiply and lactic acid bacteria dominate all other microorganisms and fermentation takes place ph drops down lactic acid is produced and because of low ph and lactic acid and anaerobic condition all other aerobic microorganisms are prevented now to improve silage making we can also artificially inoculate the fodder in the silo through inoculants bacterial inoculants so as you can understand what we need for silage making is lactic acid bacteria so if for any reason we are not satisfied with the number of lactic acid bacteria present naturally on the crop fodder crop then we can artificially spray the silo spray the fodder before ensiling with the bacterial inoculants containing some lactic acid bacteria so this bacterial inoculants supplement the lactic acid bacteria that naturally occur on crop and ensure consistent fermentation in the silo silage inoculant includes homo fermenters because these homo fermenters will produce more of lactic acid than any other compounds most common bacterial inoculant is lactobacillus plantarum and others are lactobacillus casei pediococcus species enterococcus facium now they have rapid growth and dominate the fermentation so with this we have come to know the role of microbes in silage production so if you have any query related to this presentation you can write to me in the comment box thank you very much